Most people do auto layout wrong. They throw in some object, select all, shift A, and they think that's it. Are you one of those people? I like saying no. This is why most products nowadays are misaligned and badly coded. Here is an example of a design with auto layout applied. The color scheme is like a unicorn barfed on it. The spacing is like the teeth of a bad boxer. They're all over the place. The icons are so inconsistent, it's like playing tic-tac-toe with darts underwater and upside down. Why? The alignment is like a group of drunk friends trying to hold hands and walk in a straight line. But hey, at least it uses auto layout. Design as a discipline is going downhill, but you can get out of this crazy ride, turn around and walk the other way. I'll show you the right approach and the cases in which auto layout should not be used because it's a waste of time and all of that is gonna be based on my 25 years of experience of building huge complex products. If you want to be an actually useful designer, follow the next steps and change your mindset because we have enough of mindless pixel pushers already. Auto layout is an automatic grouping technique of design elements that allows for easy changing, reflowing or modifying the elements without breaking the layout structure. It is not a magical cure for crappy design and it shouldn't be used as one. It's also not the most important thing a designer should know. A major misconception is that if you don't use auto layout, designers are gonna be mad at you or simply refuse to code your designs. That is not true and it's a myth perpetrated mostly by people associated with one specific design tool. Sure, it does help, but the priority shouldn't be whether to use auto layout or not. Your priority should be to deliver an amazing f***ing design. Because you know what, a bad design with auto layout is still a bad design. It is great when you want to have longer text or you want to add an extra object to the stack. But some people also say that it's perfect for responsive design. No. Well, okay, let me take a step back here. It does work for responsive design within one breakpoint. So if you're working on a design for the smallest possible iPhone and you want it to work on the larger iPhone, which is about 20 pixels wider, then sure, you can use auto layout for that. But auto layout shouldn't be used to create actual responsive design across multiple breakpoints. All major breakpoints require an individual approach. It's not about just fitting more content in horizontally and stretching it to this side or to this side. It's really about thinking what the best possible experience for every platform should be. A tablet is not just a wider phone. And if you're just stretching it like that, this is just lazy and this is bad design. Okay, so how to use auto layout? This is my number one rule for everyone learning to use auto layout right now. Don't design with auto layout. What do you mean? If you're making a multi layered complex design component, start with aligning everything completely manually. Especially if it's your portfolio project and it's not going to be coded always use the red square method. And even if it is going to be coded, use the red square method as well. Go quick, move stuff around, break things, modify and have fun. Auto layout will put a rigid structure onto your design that will limit your creativity. By doing manual optical layouting first, you create perfection. And once perfection is achieved, you pick the elements and groups from that interface that would benefit from auto layout. Not every element, object or even a group needs auto layout. Best objects are horizontal stacks with similar items or vertical stacks with different heights. Smaller elements that don't vary in size are a waste of your energy. So don't put a back arrow into an auto layout. And all that of course leads to something. I have my own approach to auto layout that's really based on delivering amazing products for clients. All that real world experience gives me kind of a benefit over everybody just doing auto layout for portfolio projects. Because that way I know which parts of those different design methods that people are pushing down your throat on social media are actually worth your time. So 
I'm announcing a new thing today, the boring guide to auto layout. This is part two of my best-selling boring UI course that has been taken by nearly 10,000 designers already. Pre-order starts today at $30, then it goes live mid to late December, and when it goes live, the price is gonna go up to $60. So you can get it now at half price, or you can wait a little and get it at the full one. Free money! No matter what you do, this is the best way to get a proper grasp on understanding the auto layout when not to use auto layout and optical alignment as the base of all your decision making regarding layout. So it's not just a course that will teach you how to group things into an auto layout. It's something that I don't think has ever been done before that way. It includes all exercises in Figma because it's still the most popular tool, but it does have a chapter in Sketch and in Penpot. If you or your company decide to switch the tool to a different one down the road, you'll have all the resources here you need to get you started and deliver great work in the next tool, because it's really about what you know, not what the tool does. It's also worth knowing all the possible approaches to auto layout. So remember, do manual layout first, and then you need to assess whether an element or a group of elements really needs auto layout, and only use it then, but always check what you designed, because sometimes when you group things into an auto layout, they move a couple pixels in every direction, and it's not a perfect layout anymore. Mediocrity is for all the other guys. We're here to deliver perfection, or as close to it as we can be. Because if our designs strive to be perfect, then obviously we can all have a beautiful day.